If we want to understand fundamentally reality, we have to understand the stuff of which everything is composed. How do we begin to think about the stuff of reality? Well, it's uh, obviously a very good question, and the stuff of reality has changed over time. But I think the modern picture comes down to the following. Right now, um, there, are, there are sort of three sets of things. There's the, the, the stage on which the drama of physics is played, and that's space and time. All events happen in space and in time. Are those fundamental constructs? Are they emergent from some other thing? We don't know, but that's a question. The, the, the players in space and time, on the scale that we can measure, are elementary particles. Everything we see, you and I, are made up of a, of a really nice, small subset of elementary particles. Electrons and the protons and neutrons that make up our atoms are made of quarks. And for the most part, uh, that's everything we can see. There are lots more particles in nature, but pretty well, that's what makes up you and I. Then there's the forces between particles. Now, what has, what has changed is our understanding quantum mechanically of what forces are. Because it turns out we've understand now when we combine quantum mechanics and relativity that forces really occur by the exchange of particles. So forces aren't that different than particles, except that, for example, the force of electromagnetism is conveyed by a particle that has no mass, the photon particle we call radiation. And it turns out that the particles that convey the other forces in nature in many ways look like a photon. That's been the great success and largely in my mind unheralded success in the last 30 years. We now know mathematically that the four forces in nature, including gravity, gravity, electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong force, are all conveyed by elementary particles with a mathemat mathematical structure that's very similar. It's called the gauge theory. Each of those forces, what do they do, quickly? Well, the electromagnetic force is responsible for all of chemistry and pretty well almost everything our, our existence. Why solids are solid? Most of solids are empty space. It's the, the reason my hand doesn't go through is the electric forces in the electrons in this chair repel the electrons in my hand. So electromagnetism is really the heart. Gravity, of course, is responsible for the Earth going around the sun, the apple falling on Newton's head, etc. <laughs> the other two forces, so they act on, on macroscopic scales. And that's a real difference. Electricity and magnetism acts over an infinite range, as far as we know, as does gravity. The other two forces in nature act over only very small ranges. The weak force is responsible for, among other things, the processes that power the sun, which is pretty important for our life. But the, the nuclear reactions, beta decay, and the other processes of nuclear fusion and fission that, pro that power the sun, the strong force is the force that holds together, ultimately, the, part of the constituents inside protons and neutrons and atomic nuclei. And they've only been discovered since the, the, the weak force and the strong force have, have been known only since uh, the 1930s and 40s. So those are the four forces in nature. There are four forces that interact on the particles of things that have mass that make up you and I, the particles that make us up are one what's called family. The electron and the up and down quark are one family. Mm -hmm. It turns out we've discovered there are a bunch of other families in nature that look just like the first family. And we don't know why they're there. And the, the, the physicist, uh, is or Rabbi, said it very well. He said, who ordered that when the first, <laughs> when the first heavy electron was discovered called a muon? So... That's the picture we have. And if we want to understand reality, we have to understand the nature of those forces, perhaps if they're unified together, why there are three families of elementary particles and are there more? And ultimately, all of those objects occur by events in space and time. And is that fixed or does that emerge? We know, of course, general relativity has told us that gravity is actually related to space and time. It's more complicated than the other forces in a very different way. It's fundamentally related to space and time. And so space and time themselves are dynamical. We've learned that. The dynamics of space and time is the dynamics of gravity, but does the very concept of space and time, what we mean by time or space, does that emerge from something more fundamental? And we don't know the answer to that. When you look at the components of the forces or even of the particles, 
even though they're in the same category, what they are in terms of their quantities are, are vastly different from each other. Uh, among the particles, the relative weights of electrons and, and uh, neutrons, uh, I mean, they're very different. And then when you go into the forces and you deal with gravity compared to the strong force or electromagnetism, it's wildly different. And it, 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 it almost seems hard to categorize them together. They're so different in their quantity. Exactly. Well, I mean, that is a, that's a huge problem we confront. Why on earth is the electron so much lighter, 2,000 times lighter than the proton? And why, and this is, as you pointed out, really crazy, why is gravity 40 orders of magnitude weaker? That's one with 40 zeros and the strong force. And if they are so different, how could they in any sense be unified? Well, that's the challenge we face. But, but we have learned, and we've learned right from probably the first great unification in the 1870s of electricity and magnetism, that things which seem very different can nevertheless be different reflections of reality. And that's what makes physics so wonderful, is we get outside of our myopic worldview that we're stuck to and realize if you see it from a different perspective, different things can really be the same. And that's, for me, the most satisfying aspect of science.